So the AFC North. All right, you are going to go quarterback here. Yeah. And you're going to go with probably, I mean, the best quarterback in the division. You can make that you can make that argument. And again, I just think it's interesting when you look at this division it's where Lamar, you say Lamar Jackson, by the way, should be. It's Lamar Jackson. And so when you look at this division, you know, obviously Joe Burrow just took his team to the Super Bowl. We don't necessarily know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. It kind of feels like the tea leaves are showing less than a year suspension. I, it, it, I think the Washington Post was pointing out that, you know, it's, it kind of feels like eight games. Again, nothing official there. We, we don't know what, what Sue Robinson's going to kind of come down with, with in terms of her punishment. But if you're telling me you're going to get Deshaun Watson half those games and, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in Pittsburgh with Kenny Pickett or Mitch Trubisky, Lamar Jackson could very well easily, if he plays to his ceiling, can win this division. All things being equal, he is the, he is the most talented quarterback in this division, or at least for my money, I would take. You know, you know, you're gonna have him for a full year, former MVP, the most decorated that we've seen so far, and he's clearly in a contract year. So, how does that impact all of this? How does that impact the Baltimore Ravens, who were just so snake bitten last year with injuries? They come back healthy, especially on the defensive side in that secondary. If they have somewhat of a, you know, if they have a stout defense and you have Lamar Jackson on that side, if he's able to overcome not really having those number one receivers, obviously, as Mark Andrews, but lost Marquise, Marquise Brown, if he plays to the level we saw a few years ago in 2019, that's going to make the Ravens a legit threat in the conference. So I, I thought it was – I was doing a radio with my buddy Adam Gold on Monday, and um, he asked me – he's like – he was like, there's an ESPN to the top ten list of – Jeremy Fowler uh, – Former colleague of ours. Were you here with Jeremy Fowler? I don't think so. Okay. Well, former colleague of mine then. Um, great dude. Love Jeremy Fowler. Uh, anyway, he um, he pulled a bunch of executives and you know they do this every year. Mike Sando used to do it. Now he does the athletic, but Jeremy does it for ESPN, pulls a bunch of executives. He's like, give us our top 10 list. Um, and Gold was reading off the list and um, he's like, does any, and I, like I was just in my house in my living room with no, like no, just hearing the list and trying to respond to it. And I was like, He's like, does anything strange? He's like, hey, you hear a little, you're like, ah, uh, like, I don't know. Like, but I was like, oh my God, wait, did you not, did you say Lamar Jackson's name? He's like, I did not. Lamar Jackson did not make a list of top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL, according to executive and, and Fowler writes. Um, and by the way, on the list, Deshaun Watson had played in like two years. Um, Keeping a quarterback with an MVP award to 37 and 12 records to start off a top 10 list is surprising, but that's exactly what more than half of the voters did. That is shocking to me. So I yeah. think this is like, this is a good pick by you because you have a core, like people are sleeping on Lamar Jackson. I think people are sleeping on the Ravens. Like the Ravens are still plus 160 or 180, maybe 170, something in that range at, at Caesars to win the division. Like Joe Watson's getting suspended for of so, like some kind of suspension. Yeah. Bengals are probably due for a little bit of regression. Um, and the Steelers don't, we don't know what the deal with their quarterback is. Like the Ravens, as I pointed out, had the most, you know, uh, football outsiders, you know, had it. I just keep, I just keep hammering this point home. Like 190 games, lo adjusted games lost last year. Like they dealt with crazy injury luck. It's due to regress a bit. And it's a well coached team with a franchise quarterback who was the MVP in 2019. Like, I want all the Lamar I can get for 2022 in terms of fantasy, you know, like a best ball. I'm, I'm drafting him a ton. Like he's just, he's, he, his value is not where it should be um, in terms of like people are just sleeping on Lamar and that's, and, 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 and so I want to buy, I want to buy low on the Ravens. And I think they are uh, like, it's just like an easy pick to, to win the division. Um, I will, uh, who do I want to say? I will, you know, I mean, Jared, you know, the Bengals, I feel like, I feel like it, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll cheat again. I'll go two quarterbacks. Mitchell Trubisky and Kenny Pickett. Okay. Like I think, and, and again, like I'm, I'm not even picking like an MVP so much as I am. So just the most important player to that team. Yeah. It's, it's kind of how you have to look at it. Like this, if, if Mitchell Trubisky plays, I mean, this is a former number two overall pick who has been just absolutely, you know, the Bears have been killed for taking him over Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, understandably so. Like, what if Mitchell Trubisky is better than Deshaun Watson this year? Is that out? I mean, is that is that outrageous? Like, I, I, like in terms of, not that, not that we're like, well, Mitchell Trubisky is a totally different quarterback than he was three years ago, but like. If you're telling me Mitchell Trubisky is Ryan Tannehill 2.0, comes to the next spot, 
in Pittsburgh and kind of just figures it out, yes. that is a total difference maker for Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, a complete difference maker. Like Kenny Pickett doesn't play one snap or doesn't play one game, doesn't start one game because Mr. Trubisky is just good enough to win football games and Deshaun Watson suspended like 10 games. Like you would, I mean, Mr. Trubisky would be more valuable than Deshaun Watson in that instance, especially given the relative cost to each of them. So I think if, you know, there's just so many different paths for, or not just so many different paths, but it's like if Mr. Trubisky is good and plays at a high level and keeps Kenny Pickett on the bench, the Steelers are in contention to win the division. Like, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you this too, Will. It's not, and we talk all about like, oh, you're replacing, you know, Hall of Famer and Ben Roethlisberger. This you're replacing not, a fat corpse. They were, were yes, yeah, and they were 9-7-1 yes, last nice. year. It could be a little more nice. Than, a little nicer it, than they were 9-7-1 with the, with the fat corpse that was Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, who had an 86.8 passer rating. You're telling me, like, it's not like it's, you know, Aaron Rodgers walked away and now Jordan Love has to yeah. replace this two back-to-back MVP. The floor is kind of low, and that team was pretty good with just a you know a, a slightly below average or you know whatever you want to call Ben Roethlisberger last year quarterback. He was certainly <laughs> capped. If you get some life out of either Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, your ceiling is a little bit raised with that defense. Uh, absolutely, and and for that very reason, um, yeah, I mean I think it's a you know it's a it's a case where. Trubisky is 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 one of the most important players in football this year. Not because not because he's with the best, but I mean, like if he's the Ryan Tannehill 2.0 is a good comp because Trubisky actually had like stat you know, stats in Chicago and like stretches where he would play really well. And like Ryan Tannehill put up some numbers in Miami, but you just never felt like he was the like you never felt like he could elevate you where you needed to the go. Glass was, the glass was already shattered. You're already kind of like made your decision on it. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of where you were on it. But yeah, no, I, do, I remember and, and, that too. Yeah, he suffered, you know, t- t- torn ACLs, and um, yeah. it's, they tried to rush him back too early. And then, anyway, like the point being is, yeah, like uh, the redemption setup for Mitchell Trubisky is there. It was played out all off season. When people, oh, it's like people, he's just a different guy in Buffalo. <laughs> I'm telling you, this Mitchell Trubisky, different player, and, it's, and then he gets like a really short deal, like you know, no guarantee money, just doesn't get mentioned. You know, it's, anyway. Um, that's that's my Mr. Trubisky take. I think he is. Uh, I think he's extremely important. Um, 